Folks, we're taking an old Irish classic to bring to you. Oh, that ain't it, folks. But we are taking a brisket, and we're going to show you how to do it traditionally and make your own corned beef. Homemade pickling spices that go with it, and oh, so tender it's going to be, and no preservatives. We all need all the luck we can get, so I'll see you down the trail. Hey, thank y'all for stopping by the barn today for another episode of Cowboy Cooking. Mm, what do we do here? Grilling, Dutch oven cooking, how to take care of all your cast iron and solve all your problems, and even throw in a happy dance now and then. And today, folks, we're going traditional what? An old Irish recipe, corned beef and cabbage. But before we get into this, we better talk about that cookbook that's coming out March 17th. Woo-wee! Get you a copy, check our website out. We'll be making us a book tour across the United States and we wanna see you one and all and write our little name in it for you. But I'm gonna tell you folks, if you wanna do this traditional corned beef brisket, you need to start now because we got a five day brining period. You don't wanna miss it. So get the stuff and let's start now. So I think we ought to do a little research here and talk about corned beef. Now, as far as I've always known, it's always been a brisket. Now a brisket you say is what? comes off a of beef it does and my little suspect here that I usually use as a model to show you where beef come from is too tired so we're going to show it on me right here down from the neck on that beef coming right down in the front of that chest is two sides that is the brisket one here one there but folks today I want you to know that we're using the flat the top cap off that brisket which is the leanest part and we're going to brine it now brining is a solution that is going to make meat tender, but also give it flavor. Cause a traditional brine that you might do on turkeys or something like at Thanksgiving, a lot of times that might be just like some salt, some rosemary, garlic, something like this. But folks, we have made our own pickling spice to go in that brine. So we're gonna make it tender, but also we're gonna make it more flavorful. And guess what? We're gonna put some beer in there. Yep, y'all heard the cowboys say it, you did. Now this has no preservatives in it, the method that we're using today. A lot of folks are gonna tell you, get that pink salt, that curing salt, mix that with it. It's gonna give you that brighter red color. Folks, this is the only way I know. We used to use the pickling and canning salt for our vegetables, for our meat, everything that we used it on. So the history of corned beef, now as I researched it, corned beef was really not eat a lot in Ireland. Beef was high, pork was cheaper, they was eating a lot of pork. And when the Irish immigrants all was coming over to New York City and landing there on the island and coming across through there, hey, we gotta have something to eat. Well, they found out that you could pickle this beef, which is brisket, and back then, folks, it was cheap. It really was. Now, it's a one-pot meal the way that's looking at it because you could put that in the brine solution, cook it, and what are we gonna throw in there? Something else that was cheap. That was cabbage. Just throw that all in there, let it simmer till it gets good and done, meat and a vegetable, and you had a beer, hey, I guess you're fixed up in my account. But y'all know the cowboy, he's got to put a little twist on it. I'm going to use a dried ancho chili and a guajillo chili too. Now, we're going to put that all in a cast iron skillet. And we're going to use some allspice, some cloves, some coriander. And guess what, folks? We're going to toast it. Why? Because when you toast them spices like that, guess what happens? You're making all that flavor come out of there. Now, it don't take long to do this, and you need to stir it while you're going along. And when you let it toast like that, you'll smell it. You'll think, hey, I'm gonna make my own potpourri. Don't get the two confused and try to cook with one and not the other. It ain't gonna work. But this stuff does smell so good. Let it cool a minute. Lay it out there on a cutting board. Take you a rolling pin and let's just go to mashing it. Because them cinnamon sticks, you needed to crumble them up a little cause them things is hard to break. But I want you to grind this stuff up pretty good and put it aside because we're gonna need it. So next we need to talk about the brining solution, yeah. Now, when I was little, mom and them done this with water, maybe sometimes some apple cider vinegar, but not today, folks, no. I'm going back to what everybody was telling me to do. What? Guinness beer. So folks, get you one of them bottles, a stout, dark Guinness beer, pour it in there because it's gonna add some extra flavor too. Then we're gonna add some brown sugar. We're gonna put some pickling canning salt. Now, if you say, hey, I don't wanna be doing none of that, and you have to get you some of that pink curing salt. I don't care. But folks, the way we're doing this, we have no preservatives in there. Get a little bit of that, what you call ginger, 
put it on in there, some coriander powder. Stir it up really well. But then I want you to what? Add them toasted spices. All of it, but one third of a cup. And you be asking yourself, why do we want to save one third of a cup? Because we're going to need it later. Put all that in there and stir. All them ingredients got to go together and blend all that flavor in there with that beer. Now this needs to be in a pretty large vessel. It does a big bowl because guess what? We got to add a gallon of water to it. Get it all that mixed up in there really well. And then we're going to set it right over here and we're going to pull out the star of the attraction. What is it? The beef brisket. So we got our brine solution all mixed up really well. We got that brisket sitting here. So folks, we're going to take it and just put it in that deep pan or deep casserole dish. Make sure that it gets submerged. Now, if you're putting it in a casserole dish, you may have to put a plate or something on it that gives it some weight to hold it down. Cover it, slip it in the ice box because we're going five days, remember? But every day, I want you to pull it out of there, uncover it, take you some tongs, pull that brisket out of there, give it a good stirring of all that brine solution, turn it over, put it back in there, back in the ice box. Every day, you gotta do this. So, let's see what it might look like in there, y'all, too. That'd be smelling good right there. That is so aromatic. I want to lift this out of here and show it to y'all. Because, folks, that <laughs> smells good. Now, these quality control inspectors, they be liking this. But every day, remember, you got to stir that brine solution and you got to flip that meat over. But guess what? Before we can actually start cooking this, I got to take it in the house and give it a good rinsing with cold water. Not scrubbing, just a good rinsing. Now, the reason we rinse this, because folks, we have had a lot of salt in that water, and I want to make sure none of that is leached right there on the top. Now I want you to get you a big old stock pot that's going to hold that five and a half to six pound brisket and get it on a burner over medium heat. We're going to add us some salt. And remember, that third of a cup of that good smelling spices that we toasted, we're going to put it in there. But I want that to come to a simmer before we add the brisket so all this can, them flavors can be really going well. Let's lay that big old honking piece of meat in there. We're going to cover it with a lid, let it cook over medium heat for about two hours. Well, we've been on, let me see, two hours we have according to the sun in my waterbury and folks, it's some good smelling stuff in there it is. I mean, that thing is doing its rightness. Now, if you're cooking this in the house, I would tell you, preheat that oven to about 375 degrees and put that rack down there pretty close to the bottom because we got to get a big pot in there, okay? So we got a 14 inch Dutch oven here. Got it all ready to go. Now, as you cook meat, as you boil meat, I want y'all to notice that, oh, that's hot. There is a little difference in size now. It'll always, tend to shrink up a little. So we got her sitting in there. Unsalted beef broth is what we're using because remember, we had quite a bit of salt in this little brine solution to start out with. So add you a full box of that. So beef broth is in. Get you some of them red taters. I, I like them about that size. I don't even cut them. Now if you can get the big ones and you want to cut them in half, that's fine. And I got me one head of cabbage coarsely chopped up. Now I just ask you to incorporate them all around that thing because folks we is fixed to blend us a whole bunch of really good flavors together and as my mama said one time when we is making a whole bunch that's a pot full right there now we boil this beef in here and i don't want you to discard that just yet because instead of adding some broth back to this if we run a little low We'll just sift some of that out of there and put it in there. But make sure you strain it. We'll just use the broth that comes off of it if we need it. So I'll meet y'all at the fire. Well, you see me take that horseshoe contraption known as a trivet and take them short bolts out of there and put the long ones in there. You ain't, you ain't got one. Channel have you a link pop right up there, her and Andy, where you can get one because folks, these trivets do come in handy. We need to start out pretty heavy on the bottom. These are hardwood lump coals, sort of light on the top. Now, I'm not getting much wind up here under the barn, but I will rotate a few times just to even out my heat source as we're going along. But you have to keep you a fire going so you can add more coals to this. You can't just make them automatically. So keep you a source of heat supply going and just remember to keep a watchful eye.
well, it finally is a done deal, it is. Now, how you tell when this is done? Always check them taters first because them little rascals, you don't want them to fall apart. You want them to keep your shape. That's why you must always leave the skin on them too. But poke that fork down in there, give it a turn. Hey, if it's good enough that you can pull some of that meat up there, it'll slice just right and it'll be ready. And I hear some of you out there already saying, it ain't pink. It ain't that reddish pink color. Well, remember, I told you no preservatives here. But hey, this is a glorious day and we're gonna get to see what's happening here. Now, I've never been a fan of corned beef. Let me give it a try here. Yeah? Use a jig. Hmm, I, do. Huh? I don't know how the Irish dance. You've never showed me. <laughs> it is tender, folks, and the spices that come out of that. I'll have to admit, oh, look oh. out. Hmm. That broth that settled in there with all them good pickling spices that we made, and remember we added that other back to it. Folks, that out there is some fine dining. Mm. Whew. I hope the lucky be Irish be with you and the cowboy dancing skills. Whoo, you know. I ought not even be giving you a bite. This is the first time you've showed up right at eating time. Big's been out here working the whole time. There you go, baby. Whoop. Oh, nice. Are you oh. part Irish? Yeah, I think he's got some Irish in him. Well, we hope you enjoyed this episode because we sure did. Hey, takes back a lot of memories for me. When you walk in the house, I could always tell it was St. Patrick's Day, even if I didn't read the calendar because I could always smell them little old pickling spices mama was cooking in there. But hey, I don't care what nationality you are, happy St. Patty's Day to you folks. We wish that from the bottom of our heart. And if you need anything to know about this, it'll always be down there in the little printable recipe below. And as always, I tip my hat to all our service men and women and the veterans who have kept that old flag flying safe wherever we be. God bless y'all. I have a special shout out this week to Justin Black and his three-year-old daughter. I got a really nice message from them that they sit in the kitchen and watch them videos and she be telling her daddy, hey, that ain't how the cowboy does it. So, hey, I tip my hat to y'all and I thank you so much for watching. And we hope to see you all on our book tour. And I'm gonna leave you with a little Irish blessing, I am. May your troubles always be less and your blessings always be more. And may they always be happiness around your front door. God bless you each and every one. And I'll see you down the potato, cabbage and corned beef tray. video and get a bite. <laughs> it's a drive up window, you sure you don't want a sample? Oh. Ooh. Yeah, out. Ooh. No, no, no. Woo. And we got the armor all too. Uh -huh. <laughs> Just in case I was cleaning the car. <laughs> hey, that'll work, Shan. <laughs> <laughs>